two, one. Mark. And we are at T minus nine minutes and counting. The LS auto sequence has been initiated. And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. All countdown functions now are automatically controlled by the GLS computer located in the firing room integration console. NASA test director Charlie Blackwell Thompson is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands. Everything is go. T minus eight minutes, 30 seconds and counting. OTC, connect the central buses to fuel cells per your checklist. KLT, that's in work. T minus eight minutes and counting. Pilot Kevin Ford is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. OTC, PLT, essential buses all connected to the fuel cells. Copy. And that work is complete. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. CLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. And the orbiter access arm and is now being retracted away from Discovery. LM, LMC, and of course the Colbert, safely into orbit. Have a great flight. Yes. Those words from orbiter test conductor John Craxon. The orbiter access arm is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the shuttle and it can be returned to position within seconds if necessary. T minus six minutes, 56 seconds and counting. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds and counting. CRPS OTC start APU display recorders. Display recorders running. PLT OTC perform APU pre start. PLT, that's in work. Orbiter test conductor has given pilot Kevin Ford the go ahead to perform the auxiliary power unit pre start procedure. The APUs provide pressure to the shuttle's three hydraulic systems, which move the main engine nozzles and the aero surfaces. T minus five minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. OTC, PLT, APU, pre start complete. Three, three, talk back. Happy. APU pre start is complete. Everything looks good. We're working no technical issues. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. T minus five minutes, 10 seconds and counting, and we'll be standing by for a go for APU start. CLS is go for orbiter APU start. PLT OTC perform APU start. And CDR OTC. CDR OTC reconfigure heaters. T minus four minutes, 44 seconds and count. CDR heater reconfig complete. Copy. The launch team has terminated liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank and is now initiating LOX drain back. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds. If you start complete, three at high range. Copy. Three good auxiliary power units reported by pilot Kevin Ford.
T minus four minutes and counting. Helium is go for purge sequence four. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. And a final test of the flight control surfaces is now being conducted. It's a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. T minus three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Final aero surface checks are complete and Discovery's three main engines will be gimbaled through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting. Final pressurization of the external tank's liquid oxygen tank is underway. DLS is go for ET LO2 pressurization. And we're completing the purge of the shuttle main engines. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. TLT, OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. TLT, at two T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. External fuel cell loading is terminated. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. OTC, PLT, caution warm memory, clear, no unexpected errors. Happy and discovery, OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. T minus two minutes. Discovery, Roger. CLS is go for EP, LH2, pressurization. Liquid hydrogen. Replenish on the external tank is now being terminated. The astronauts are closing their helmet visors, allowing their suits to be fully pressurized. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, and counting. All systems are go. We're about 90 seconds from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressure. T minus one minute and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 50 seconds. Transitioning to orbital internal power, Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. T minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. And CLS is go for main engine start. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling onto the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Thirty-two seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Discovery three and a half miles in altitude, four miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center.
standing by for the throttle up call now from Capcom, Eric Bow. Discovery. Cap, go ahead, throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Sterko, joined on the flight deck by pilot Kevin Ford, flight engineer Jose Hernandez and Pat Forrester. Seated down on the mid-deck are Danny Olivas, Christopher Fugelsang of the European Space Agency, and Nicole Stott, hitching a ride for three months on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. All of Discovery systems performing normally, 17 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging, the onboard computer steering the shuttle for its precise path to the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 54 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Discovery two engine Maroon. Copy two engine Maroon. Three minutes into the flight, everything going very well for Discovery, 47 miles in altitude, 85 miles downrange. The orbital maneuvering system engines ignited, Discovery kicking on the afterburners for one minute, 52 seconds, assisting the shuttle and its crew on their climb to orbit. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Discovery coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle will be too far downrange, too high an altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Discovery, negative return. Discovery speeding straight as an arrow on its night flight toward a date with the International Space Station Sunday night. Four minutes, eight seconds into the flight. Discovery 61 miles in altitude, 163 miles downrange from the Cape. All systems in great shape. More than halfway toward its preliminary orbit, Discovery's engines, fuel cells, and auxiliary power units performing as advertised. Discovery now 212 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of a good flash evaporator system providing cooling for Discovery's avionics until the payload bay doors are open an hour and a half into the flight. Five minutes into the ascent toward orbit. This view from a camera on the external fuel tank. Discovery, press to ATO, select Istris. Press to ATO, we'll select Istris. That call from Capcom, Eric Bowe, indicating that Discovery can make minimal abort to orbit targets uh, in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to perform perfectly. Discovery, single engine, Ops 3. Copy, single engine, Ops 3. Discovery now 336 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, coming up on the six-minute mark into the flight. 
The guidance officer in Mission Control confirming that Discovery's computers have commanded the main engines to swivel again, enabling the shuttle to roll to a heads-up position above the fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Single engine Istris 104. Discovery, Roger. And Discovery, press to Miko. Roger, press to Miko. That call from Capcom Eric Bowe indicating that Discovery can make normal main engine cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, six and a half minutes into the flight, all three main engines performing normally. Discovery now 466 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Less than two minutes of powered flight remaining. Discovery, single engine press 104, nominal shutdown plan. Go for the 22nd plus X, no go the pitch. Discovery, copy all, 22nd plus X, no go the pitch. The 22nd plus X referred to by Capcom Eric Bowe is the maneuver that Commander Rick Sterko will perform after uh, external tank separation, enabling umbilical well cameras to obtain flash photography of the fuel tank as it drifts away. Seven and a half minutes into the flight, the main engine's being throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its seven crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Discovery currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles per second. Discovery and its crew, 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. 40 seconds of powered flight remaining. Standing by now for main engine cutoff. That will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Copy, Booster officer confirms a good main engine cutoff. Now standing by for external tank separation. External tank separation confirmed. Discovery now in its preliminary orbit. You can see the flash photography as Discovery fades away from the camera view. Good maneuver being com commanded by uh, Rick Sterko, maneuvering Discovery so that those cameras embedded in the umbilical well can perform that flash photography of the discarded external fuel tank. An uneventful ride to orbit for the shuttle Discovery, two days shy of its 25th anniversary of its maiden flight, beginning a 13-day mission. Discovery, nominal Miko, OMS-1 is not required. Discovery, Roger. 